Well, I'm back with Judy Ann Foster, who is the founder of Women's Wisdom, who is, which is celebrating its uh, 25th anniversary this month. And so um, we've been talking about all the things that she's been doing with Women's Wisdom and with ma uh, mastermind groups and so forth. And, um, you know, I uh, you started out as a teacher, Judy, uh, and so you always had this giving kind of, uh, I guess, personality within you, but being an entrepreneur is a whole different ball game. So what do you think has made you an effective entrepreneur and what do you think it takes to be an effective entrepreneur? Okay, very good question. Uh, interesting you remembered I was a teacher too. Yes, well, I was a Montessori teacher and owned two Montessori schools when I started Women's Wisdom. And I remember a friend of mine would say, Judy, I see you as a CEO of a company. The way you think and the way you um, handle things and, and do business, you just seem like you are a CEO of a company. And I never forgot those words. And I would just say, oh, I love teaching. and I just want to be a teacher. And she saw this, uh, uh, something bigger, another vision for me. And at the time, I just didn't even understand what she was talking about. So I remember uh, when I decided to start Women's Wisdom and just wanting to be uh, in an environment within a more positive, inspiring environment and starting Women's Wisdom, I remember it was a donation. I, I didn't even think of it as a business. I started as something fun to do. And right away, it turned into a, a, a business. It just started growing and taking off on its own. And what I realized that I was doing is I was open and had a willingness to learn. And I wasn't afraid to follow my dream. I remember getting the idea to start Women's Wisdom on a Sunday night. The idea came to me. And that next morning before my Montessori school doors opened, I was calling all my friends saying, I want to start a women's group. Can you come next Monday? And in one week, that's when 17 women showed up. And then the other half that wanted to and couldn't come came the following week. And we ended up with 40 the second week, I got the idea and I took action. I didn't have a computer then, no emails to invite people. I didn't have a, you know, a business name, a logo, a website. I didn't have anything. I got the idea. I was willing to take a risk. That's another thing for business owners, not to be afraid to take a risk. And I just put it out there, not being afraid. I had this dream and I just took action immediately and started sharing it with people. My enthusiasm, my excitement and passion over what I wanted to create. I didn't even have a plan. I didn't know what I was going to do at my first circle. And so that is, I, I hear that all the time when I'm with women. It's like, oh, I'm waiting. I need, I need my website. Uh, I need to do this. I need to make a business plan. And all of that is very good. But my success came from hearing that inner voice, getting an idea, taking action immediately, and trusting that I was following my inner intuition, following a, a dream that I had, and just going for it and taking a risk. I you know, successful on you, you, you mentioned a couple of things, Judy. First of all, you know, uh, I agree with you. Implementation is the key. Taking action is the key. Not waiting for it to be perfect, just doing it. And uh, also, um, I think, and certainly this was the way with me, with probably everything I've done, is naivety. In the beginning is just not knowing what you're doing and just going ahead and doing it anyway. And the interesting thing is there are those people who say, no, you have to have a strict business plan and it's got to be all laid out and so forth and so on. And for example, you can't even go to a bank for a loan if you don't have a, a business plan. And then there are others that say, well, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to start. However, um, you have to have a pretty good network of women around you that when you put that first, you know, this is what I'm going to do out there, 17 people showed up. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many people could do that. So that that's great. The other thing you mentioned was taking a risk. And from what I have seen with most entrepreneurs is that most entrepreneurs don't consider what they're doing risky. They just don't know 
how not to do it. I mean, there it just wouldn't even enter their mind that this is not something that they should try. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of entrepreneurs don't consider themselves risk takers is because they wouldn't know how to do it any other way. So <clears throat> I think that that's, that's a part of that. And what about some success strategies? I know you like to talk about those. Um, yes. Well, I had mentioned um, being organized, having a dream team, um, having a support system, and also um, I've heard that successful entrepreneurs exhibit vision, systematic thinking, strong and analytical skills, and a blend of humility and ambition. I love that quote. Um, those are very important aspects to it also. Um, having inner discipline. And I remember w listening to a, um, a tape once on success in business. Uh, for entrepreneurs, that is it's easy to uh, procrastinate because we're sometimes we're working in home offices or we're working alone and it's hard to have that discipline. And I remember this tape saying, when you wake up, act as if you're the CEO of a million dollar company. You, would you be sleeping in? Would you be staying in your, you know, pajamas and yoga clothes all day, you know, dress for success, get, get up and act like you're going to a million dollar office and running this huge company, even though you're self-employed, you're starting as a new entrepreneur, you're working in a home office. And I never forgot that. I heard that like almost 30 years ago when I was still a teacher. And I remembered that. And that's what I practiced when I started um, working for myself and having my own business, especially for women. <laughs> but you I think know, that's a really good idea. Didn't you think about... Um, I mean, owning two Montessori schools, that's a business. So you did have some business experience before you um, went into to women's wisdom. So, or did you just consider that another labor of love? It was one of those things that came easy for me. So I must have already had that entrepreneurial, you know, part of me already without even knowing. I didn't even know the word then when I was a teacher. It was what I learned later. I didn't even know, you know, I just thought, oh, I'm a small business. And um, so I did have those skills. You know, I did have a business bank account. I did have that. So there was a basic, I had the basics um, with having a Montessori school. Yeah. And I would think also, you know, you, you say you weren't very organized and can help you with that. But golly, when you have a Montessori school, because I had a chain of career schools, so I understand what's involved there. And, uh, you know, when you've got two Montessori schools, you have to be organized. You've got teachers, you've got students, you've got rent, you've got uh, overhead, you've got Oh, a whole bunch. You got regulations, you know, from the state. You got a whole bunch of things. So, you know, I don't believe you when you say you weren't that organized, because in order to run two schools like that, you you have got to be organized. So, tell tell us some advice you have for uh, the women who are listening to this show, and I, and I want you to include in that something about age, because you know. Uh, you're certainly not old, but you're not a spring chicken. And a lot of people tell me, oh, gosh, I'm 50. I, I, I'm too old. I can't start something now. It's just too late. I just want to get your philosophy on that. Okay, well, that's a, that's a good one. I remember asking my mother how she felt, you know, when she was aging. And I remember her saying, I look in the mirror and I see a woman that looks older, but inside I still feel like I'm in my 20s. And I never forgot that. It was like, oh, wow. And she's still, even at her age in her 80s, she travels, she still works. She's like, you know, helping with family, creating events for all of us. She's just very useful because she has a passion. She has goals. There's she loves her life and it's, she's a very, uh, and it's great inspiration for me. And so age is a state of mind. It's not about the number. It's how we feel inside. And that's what's so nice about having something that you really are excited about and passionate about something that you love. 
Um, I wake up in the morning excited about my new project and what I'm going to create next. Having that is, is very, keeps us useful and we don't, we don't feel it's about the number of the years that we are, but really how we're feeling inside. And that's where it's really important for women to have self-care and have things taking care of themselves so that they can be more of service to others. That's so important. Um, having things that we do for fun, taking time for ourselves. You know, we spend a family's a priority. Um, in my time management class, I share how, you know, we put in all our, um, for the whole year, which we'll be doing, getting ready to do for 2018, is where we highlight all our family birthdays in pink for the whole year, because pink's the color of love. So we put birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, you know, all that goes in our calendar first. In lavender, I put all my spiritual dates, you know, my retreats and special events, my all-day Christmas meditation. I put all that in a different color. And then we put in our business. Wow, that, put that's kind one. of a reverse approach. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, you know, reverse. <laughs> I keep that in my mastermind and people go, wow, really? It's like, okay, this is what works for me. This is what creates success for me. God first and everything else will follow. So we put family dates, you know, spiritual dates, and then we see where business can go. Well, you know, that is a very different approach, though, uh, Judy. And uh, again, what, what is so wonderful about the people I interview on these shows is everybody has a different philosophy and everybody has a different approach. And that's what makes it all worthwhile, that we can all do what we want. But uh, uh, some of the listeners know I've just come back from a uh, a 60th wedding anniversary cruise for my sister and her husband. And there were 22 of us on the cruise. And uh, it was just wonderful to be with family and to see how everybody is doing. And of course, the young people, and we had uh, some of the great grandchildren were there. And uh, it was really, it was really very, very nice. So uh, I think, uh, that, uh, yeah, I mean, it, and it's funny because it occurred over a time where I had three different conferences to go to, one of which I had been chairman of for five years, but I didn't go. Another one, I had never missed uh, one of their conferences since they've been holding them, which is many, many years that I didn't go. And another one where I was asked to speak and I didn't go. And that was uh, one. So I said, you know, this is the one time I said, how many times will your sister have a 60th wedding anniversary cruise? So um what are some of the benefits you think of being a business owner, Judy? Well, for me, it's, it's of, of, of being a business owner. For me, it's really having freedom to set my own schedule. Um, you know, people think I'm really, really busy and always out and about and going here and there. What they don't know is that I'm a grandmother of 11 children, one in the oven. Uh, what, so we're going to have number 12. Um, and 11 I, actually, I think you only had wow I think you only had three or four when I knew you so 11 wonderful and yeah, so, yeah between Ken and I three daughters and 11 grandchildren one more is on the way so I actually help out and pick up two from school almost every day and um, bring them home until their parents get off work so I've been able to have time to be with my family and and be with those kids when they're young and develop that you know bond when they're young that's the most important years so that's a big bonus for me having that freedom to set my own schedule to have my own time um, to create events around you know uh times that are you know not in a conflict with family so that's a huge plus for me uh is just is freedom to create my own schedule, to create the life that I want to have. Being an entrepreneur is my biggest blessing for me. Well, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people who say, you know, well, I'm an entrepreneur and I have my own business because I wanted to have the freedom and I didn't want to answer to anybody else. And yet many of them, and I have to say, this is me, <laughs> this is me. It takes over your entire life. I mean, I love what I do and I love it so much that I do it all the time. And so I really do have to um, say, okay, I'm going to take this break now and or whatever. Um, and I do that primarily through my animals because I love my animals. And um, 
Uh, but it, it's going to be a very different thing if I head out west permanently. It's going to be a whole different kind of lifestyle for me. So uh, that's going to be interesting as well. So um, what would you say if if people were saying to you, okay, uh, Judy, tell me uh, some of your final thoughts. What do, you, what do you think about different things? What What would your answer be? Okay, for women in business, because that's um, who I work with, is listening to your intuition. I have found that developing your intuition, however that may may be, being in nature, through music, through art, uh, for me it's through meditation, has developed my intuition. I've learned from a very young age to trust that, that gut feeling we get. A lot of times women ignore that and they wonder why things aren't working, but honoring that gut feeling inside and that intuition and making decisions from that place is really powerful for women because so many of us are so busy doing so many things we tend to forget about that and are rushing around and doing this and that but taking that time for our self-care nurturing time to be alone finding those things that um, nurture us in a way where we have time in silence and developing our intuition um, is is really a power tool for women and it has been for me. That's what's really helped me to make the right decisions and be more successful in, in my life and in my business. And for women, I love this quote by the Dalai Lama. It's a recent quote that is probably very popular. The world will be saved by the Western woman. The world will be saved by the Western woman. When did I he love say that. that? When did he say that, Judy? I it, he, it was it was at an event um, a year or so ago. I'd have to look it up. I don't remember exactly. But I mean, it was it. recent. It was recent. Y- yes, yes, it was. Um, wow. And I just love quote and and you see that you know women becoming more empowered, more women starting their own business, being in leadership roles, being running companies. Um, it's a very exciting time. And I think if, if women can just re- remember that quote and read that, and uh, it's for me, it's, it's a, an anchor. It anchors me into my purpose, my passion, and how I can make a difference for other women and in my whole life. And it's like what Oprah said also, think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. But it's it, I mean, if the Dalai Lama said that and I, I was not aware of that, I think that is pretty phenomenal. I mean, I, I can't even imagine that um, uh, anybody how anybody could ignore that. And especially when it's interesting, you're saying the Western woman, since he comes from such a philosophical viewpoint that um, uh, it would be that kind of a quote from him because he practices so much meditation and so much wisdom, which is more of an Eastern philosophy than anything else. So this is, <laughs> to me, quite unusual, you know? Yes, it, it's such a, a, an empower, empowering uh, thought and quote for women to really live in a, in a much bigger way and make a difference in a bigger way and really, um, the foundations ask for women to start honoring other women, women supporting other women, women um, collaborating together, growing together, and really making a difference together in the world. And that's what motivates me and inspires me to continue with my passion for helping women in their business and in their personal life through Women's Wisdom Network. So if you were going to... Um, uh, uh, Well, let's find out, first of all, how people can get in touch with you. What's the best way to reach Judy? I'm easy. (laughs) Womenswisdom.net. Womenswisdom.net. Okay, that's the best. My email's there, phone number's there, and I'm easy to reach. Um, The website um, has everything on it. It has my events. It has our sponsors and our members and all the different gatherings that we have. The calendar's there. 
So there's a lot of information there to help women in their business. Wow. Wow. Well, folks, uh, you've been listening to Judy Ann Foster, and I want to remind you of some of her of her accolades. Uh, she was the recipient of the Women Changing the World Award by the uh, Women's Leadership Institute. The San Diego Business Journal awarded her the Women Who Mean Business Award. The San Diego Magazine awarded her the Women of the Year Award. And she was a nominee for the Women of Influence Award. And she was recognized by the State of California Assembly and the Senate. And at least she was recognized for something good and not what we hear about all the time. So so that's pretty good, too. Um, Are there any other thoughts? We've got about two minutes left, Judy. Are there any other thoughts that you would like to leave our audience with? Oh, well, my my favorite. um, Self-care is really to take time for yourself and have time alone to really be able to um, take care of ourselves and nurture ourselves is a huge gift for women so that we can really be there to help other women also and help our families and be more powerful in our business. And what is the best self-care tip you could give our audience? Well, it's different for everyone. So uh, it could be in art and music and being in nature, walking on the beach, watching the sunset. For me personally, it's my meditation. It's my quiet time. It's my alone time. I get more creativity, more insights uh, when I'm alone. So I spend a lot of time alone. Sometimes I'll spend one or two days, you know, at home alone where I don't have any appointments and I just nurse, uh, love, appreciate that time to be alone Um, because I am with a lot of people. So it does require more quiet and alone time for me and spiritual reading um, to inspire me um, spiritually. I think that's the foundation for me is my spiritual path. Interesting. Um, You know, it's so interesting because I can, I can, knowing you, I can understand this and I can see this. And for me, I would think I would go crazy. Uh, (laughs) If I didn't, if I wasn't busy all the time and I didn't have a lot of people around me, but I will tell you when I really, really relax is when I uh, climb into bed at night and it's usually about nine o'clock and I just turn on the TV and there's, I, yeah, that's when I really watch TV is from nine to 11. Then I go right to sleep and I, without even realizing my cats are all around me, my cat, one cat is in my lap and the other cat is right by my side and I get so much pleasure from talking to them and petting them and being with them. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, uh, that is the way I feel. So, um, no, not at all. I'm glad you shared that because animals are self care. Yes, that's, I didn't mention that one, but there's so many. I have a list of 101 ways for self care. Um, yes, animals are very wonderful for our self care. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm glad well, you you know, um, you need to go to, to uh, womenswisdom.net. You need to go to Judy's website, see what she's all about, see what the organization is all about. She's got a lot of material there that uh, she can share with you and that you'll benefit from. Uh, I want to thank you so much for being with us today, Judy. It has been an absolute pleasure. And we will connect again as soon as I can get my schedule to meet your schedule. Uh, I will be seeing you again in San Diego. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Gail. You're welcome. You've had the opportunity to get to know me over the last few years, and I'd like to get to know you as well. One of the things I'm offering is training for the media. I have a wonderful program that will get you ready for any radio or TV interview you might be offered. Many of you are doing wonderful things, but no one knows about them. Others of you are successful and wonder what's next. Whether you're in a business or have a special cause or a specific event you're promoting, media can help, and I can help you master your message so you can master the media. If this sounds interesting to you, email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com with media training in the subject line. I promise I will be in touch.